complicated concept like cryptocurrencies, like Bitcoin, Ethereum, all that stuff you keep hearing about explained simply, explained so simply that a sixth standard student, a third standard student will understand what crypto means and aspects of it from this crypto basics conversation. This is Sumit Gupta, the founder of one of India's biggest crypto based companies, CoinDCX, sharing the knowledge he studied for the last 10 years. 10 years of knowledge packed into 30 minutes. Enjoy yourselves. Sumit Gupta, firstly, welcome Yo. to the Ranveer show. Uh, Thank you, Ranveer. Uh, secondly, you're one of the most uh, insightful people I've met in my life. I met you two years back in yes, Bangalore. Yes, in Bangalore. you were talking about cryptocurrency to me then. Yes. I was like, bhai, main podcast karne ka soch I'm going to plan something very cool around crypto. And when the time is right, we'll have you on the show. The time is right. Time is right here. <laughs> <laughs> Why has crypto gotten so hyped in the last two, three weeks? Hmm. I'd probably say in the last one, two months, maybe. What has happened? Sure. So what has happened in the last one year is COVID happened mm. and you would have seen a lot of uh, countries uh, printing trillions of dollars, mm. money coming into the system. So what has happened here is that the fiat currency that is INR, US dollar, euro that we hold is devaluing over time. Matlab, uh, all currencies of the world, so a rupee, a yen, whatever, Australian dollar, they value themselves against the American dollar. Uh, so they are related. What mm. has happened earlier, uh, whatever uh, fiat currency that we had was backed by gold until 1972-73. Mm. The money that you have that comes into the system that is no longer pegged to gold. Mm. And the governments can print as much money as they want. Now we have seen US printing trillions of dollars which is equivalent to the GDP of India. Mm. Now imagine that much of new money coming into the system. Mm. The value, the things that we can purchase with that 100 rupees um, in in few or uh, uh, future, right, you will not be able to buy that much. So mm. the inflation can happen. Uh, the value of our fiat currency is going down over time. Before, there were a lot of things in 100 rupees, and there were right? And as we are progressing, that money will continue to devalue over time. So what people do is, people use that money to invest in certain instruments. Mm -hmm. Now, all of that money is new coming into the system. Right. And our fiat is getting devalued. So people have started putting more money into Bitcoin. Mm. Why Bitcoin? Because earlier people used to put money in gold, real estate, equity markets. Now equity market is already at peak. Real estate is not giving that much returns. Mm. So what people have done is people have started seeing Bitcoin as a good store of value. Mm. People of our age, mm. they don't buy gold now. Mm. They buy Bitcoin, mm. right? Mm. Um, that's a very good hedge against inflation. So whatever happens, you'll have Bitcoin. So a lot of people, including companies like Tesla, PayPal, they have started putting their cash reserves in Bitcoin, mm. right? So that they can, that if that appreciates in value, their cash doesn't deplete over time. Mm. So basically at its core, if you want to become rich, if you want a good investment strategy, Cryptocurrencies in general are one place you can look at and say, huh, if I invest my money here, it's likely that I will get profits over time. It's a very good portfolio diversification. If you have 1 lakh rupees, you can put 50,000 rupees in mutual funds, 20,000 rupees in stocks, uh, 10,000 rupees in let's say real estate, but you should have a part of your portfolio into crypto, mm. primarily Bitcoin, which is the store of value. Yeah. So it's a very good uh, hedge against inflation and very good uh, asset to have as a part of your portfolio. Mm. So I feel that you are a crypto expert. You're from the crypto world. I'm not. I'm a content creator and I am looking at investing my own money, but I use a lot of Twitter. And that's the place where I learn a lot. Now I've heard Elon Musk talk about crypto. I've heard Kunal Shah talk about crypto. I've heard all these amazing, Naval Ravi Khan talks so yeah. much about crypto. They are people I look up to. They are people who've achieved something in their life. And they are talking so much about taking a part of your money and putting it into crypto. The whole world of Twitter is talking about it. Hmm. I want to learn the basics again while I know the basics. Uh, I want to ask you some more advanced questions, which maybe we'll do in the second part of this podcast. Uh, but bro, matlab, if you had to explain... <laughs> Crypto to a three, four year old, uh, how would you explain it? Like, what is it? Sure. Uh, so let's look at the real world example. Mm. When we interact with each other, mm. um, there are various ways we transfer value, mm. right? Uh, we either give value in form of money mm. or in form of information. Now, when we do this trade of value or information, uh, we need middlemen. 
Mm. Right. For example, if you are taking, if you want to take a cab, you need companies like Uber, mm. Ola. If you want to buy a product online, you need Amazon. Mm. So these are the companies who build this level of trust between two individuals directly transacting with each other. Mm. Right. Mm. Uh, why? Because uh, if two people want to communicate, they need a central party. Mm. Now imagine the world where you don't need these middlemen, mm. and two people can directly transact or exchange value with each other mm. without. trusting a centralized party because centralized party um, can be corrupted mm. right there uh, uh, in future if there is a way you can transact or transfer this value over the internet that's what blockchain provides mm. so blockchain is basically a technology that decentralizes that decentralizes so you are no longer trusting a part, uh, single entity right mm. now we trust banks mm. but we have seen what have happened to the banks in the past mm. right we don't have full transparency of how they operate in a decentralized manner you will have full visibility the entire ledger is public and you can trust the system more without uh, without the need to trust a centralized party because mm. the system is designed in a way Yeah, one one second, bro. Let me just get this straight. So, hmm. say the case of a Punjab National Bank or any other bank that probably shut down. Now, if I put all my money into that Punjab National Bank, and every time I was trying to make a payment using a debit card from that bank, but it's shut down. It's going through a lot of shit. Then your payment doesn't happen. Maybe you're going to say a Zara to purchase something, and I give that Punjab National Bank card or any other bank card which has kind of is going through a rough time. Hmm. it may not work it may not because work. of their flaw like punjab yes. national bank messed up their management or that particular bank messed up their work and then your money and your spending power gets affected yes so you're saying that blockchain will remove that gap between you and azara purchase yes in order to do a transaction you don't need a bank you can directly transfer between two individuals mm. now the money that we have right we trust someone that the money has value but mm. where did it come from right uh, where did the trust come from yeah so where mm. did the trust come from because we trust these middlemen or these brokers to build that level of trust just because that's how society operates that's how Still society that. operates earlier mm. if you look at the evolution of money uh, thousands of years back people used to transact in gold mm. right there were mm. coins that were made out of gold mm. and now then because gold a uh, base transactions are difficult to do then we shifted to a paper money mm. right which mm. used gold as a pegging mechanism mm -hmm. now that has evolved like in those several years now money is not pegged by anything mm -hmm. right so tomorrow if if a bank fails down without you your mistake you are getting affected mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know if if you look at 2008 financial crisis mm -hmm. what happened that was a mistake by some of the banks where they have given bad loans mm -hmm. and the whole world got into recession mm -hmm. that should not happen and that's where bitcoin was born Mm. right a pseudonymous name called uh, satoshi nakamoto he came up with a way where how can you build a monetary system without the need to trust banks mm. and you are sure that if you own certain bitcoins that completely belongs to you mm. it does not have uh, you know uh, need assurance from anyone else from a uh, centralized party it is your own money mm. that you have full control of mm. very beautiful bro so uh, you're saying now 10 years 20 years into the future when bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are more common if i want to buy your suit i can pay you in bitcoin and you'll be like yeah cool i received it and you'll give me your suit rather than you having a debit card machine me having a debit card putting it into your machine like from each other's phones or from some technology we'll be able to transact between each other Yes, that can also happen. So there are various cases of crypto uh, assets, right? So one, for example, Bitcoin is like an asset, mm. just like how you treat gold. Bitcoin is like that. It mm. is a store of value, mm. right? Uh, there are certain uh, currencies that the government will develop. There's something that you might have heard about CBDCs, central bank digital currencies. Now CBDCs can replace the current uh, uh, financial uh, rupee, right? Mm. That can be a digital rupee which runs on top of blockchain. Mm. Now with blockchain, you will have full transparency of how the money is being used. Mm. Let's say there is a donation, mm. right? With COVID, mm. lot of uh, firms have raised donations. Mm. Now if you want to see the entire ledger. how the money came where it go you will have full transparency transparency of the entire system mm. that is what blockchain provides got it so again i'll just make this even simpler for the end users basically uh, i have been consuming a lot of crypto content lately and the understanding i got about blockchain was that um, i'm not saying the government but higher authorities have a lot of layers so when you are trying to say transfer money from india to bangladesh it has to go through many 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 layers mm. but with blockchain coming in you can skip all those layers that you're going through and just take the easy route 
from person A in India to person B in Bangladesh. Suppose I want to transfer money to Shake Bulasan and I am sitting in Bombay. I'll just take Shake Bulasan's ID and say, here, take the money. We're skipping all those layers of governments, all those layers of bureaucracy. And that's possibly why governments are a little afraid of cryptocurrency. Yes, you're absolutely right. So this can be technical. In theory, it is possible. Mm. Kyunke, right? Because in that transfer where there is going through many layers, even those people can make profits of the money transfer that you are making. Yes. Because at its core, human beings all want money for themselves. Hmm. So you are skipping that. You're saying, no, the money transaction is between Ranveer and Shakibul Hassan in Bangladesh. Not all those layers of government officials and all that. Right. So if we see how we transfer the money, right? Mm -hmm. If I do a UPI to you, or if I send $1,000 to someone in the US, it is not peer to peer. There are various middlemen involved. There are mm -hmm. thousands of people sitting in physical bank branches who are making the transaction happen. Mm -hmm. And that takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. That costs a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Now with blockchain, you can do all of that instantly, near instantly, and almost free of cost. Mm. So you don't need these middlemen. The system is designed in a way where you can transfer value efficiently, mm -hmm. right? So the whole financial markets can improve, can become more efficient, not just efficient, but far more secured and cheaper also. So mm. that will save billions of dollars to the government. Mm. Now talking about transferring money from one country to another, that is where regulations comes into picture. Mm. We don't want a world where people just send money to each other anywhere in the world, right? That is where regulation... Because it can fuel terrorism. It can yes. fuel like wrong things. That's, yes. that's why a lot of the public has a negative opinion on crypto. They think ki, yaar, if crypto becomes powerful, things like terrorism, things like crime also might become a possibility. Right. But right now, if you look at the database, uh, with crypto, less than 0.3% of the transactions are uh, not being used in the right manner. Okay. Right. Uh, I mean, like if you look at fiat currencies, all of these activities still happen. Like with INR, with USD, that still happens. Crypto makes it more transparent. Now you can track the transactions. That's the positive of it. Matlab, okay, let me just get this straight uh, so that the users also understand. Sure. Say, if I am buying your suit, okay? Someone who also owns Bitcoin in USA, who doesn't even know Sumit, who doesn't even know Ranveer, but because the data of Ranveer and Sumit and our transaction of me buying your suit is in India, that person sitting in US can actually view our transaction. Ki, haan, hai, in dono ke beech transaction hui. They'll correct? not be able to see whether Ranveer and Sumit did the transaction, but they can see in the ledger that transaction happened okay. at this particular timestamp. Okay. So it is secured, transparent, without revealing the identity of the people okay. who are doing the transaction. So if Manlo, like, let's take the case of someone sitting in Afghanistan wants uh, money to buy guns or hmm. whatever. You know, if Al-Qaeda is sitting there hmm. and they have Bitcoin with them, they have cryptocurrency with them. Um, if they are buying guns or bombs, obviously that's an expensive purchase. And they are, say, buying guns and bombs from, I don't know, maybe someone sitting in USA making guns and bombs. Uh, now that's a big purchase. So everyone who owns Bitcoin will know, okay, there is some purchase that's happened in Afghanistan, which is a big amount, which usually doesn't happen. There's something scary going on there. So now let's inform government authorities or whatever and send people to investigate ki ye kya hua, kyun hua, kaha hua. Hmm. So the good thing here is that when we are using a cash right? A thousand, two thousand rupee note. There is no trace of it. Mm. Here you can completely trace how the money went. Kisne kisse hai? Uh, did it go to the second person? Wahan se kaise gaya hai? Mm. And what was the ultimate place where the uh, funds are used? Mm. With this, with the right regulations, you can keep a complete check on uh, the trace of the funds and see whether it was used in the right manner or not. Mm. That is where regulations will help the country to use the positives of the blockchain technology, mm. to use the positives of this underlying uh, uh, trend that we are seeing. How can we make the current financial systems more efficient, mm. uh, keeping the bad actors out of the system? Mm. So actually, you're saying that all the uh, crypto officials like yourself, you're also someone who's leading the charge for crypto in India. We haven't actually introduced you on this podcast, bro. Uh, quickly introduce yourself to the audiences. Who are you? What do you do? Sure. So I'm an engineer turned entrepreneur. Mm. I have loved solving problems, uh, doing experiments, uh, taking risks in life, uh, as you can see. <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, during my college, I learned a lot of things about new technologies. Crypto was one of them. After that, I did my first job at Sony Japan. That's where I heard about Bitcoin for the first time. Uh, it is difficult. Understanding Bitcoin was difficult. I had a hard time. I left it. I did not invest. If I would have invested in 2014, I would be a millionaire by now. <laughs> right? So I didn't invest. But then I felt that that's one of the things that I had. What if I have learned that time? Now mm. we're in the same state, whether everyone is curious 
about what is Bitcoin, what is blockchain technology. And uh, that's the thing that I want to solve. Like, how can we bring crypto to India? Because mm. uh, there's very little activity that's happening in the country. Whereas mm. if you see the other countries, they are more progressive. They are mm. adopting blockchain. Mm. They are building solutions. Mm. They are making their current systems more efficient. Mm. They're making it Bitcoin friendly, crypto friendly. Crypto friendly. Uh, and I feel there is opportunity for India to grow here. And that's, that's something you read on Twitter a lot that every other country is figuring out, okay, how do we work with crypto? And in India, a lot of people, especially older people are saying, no, we don't want crypto, just because of a lack of understanding. So I hope actually this podcast helps solve that. If there are kids watching this, educate your parents in the same way. Educate people around you. So what we were talking about is that there are crypto officials, like yourself, it's not an official term, but you are a crypto-based entrepreneur. Uh, I have two questions. One, just give the audience some perspective that if you had invested, say, around 1 lakh rupees in 2010 in crypto, in Bitcoin, how much would that be worth right now? Mm, I think that would be worth more than 500 crores by now. 1 lakh rupees in 2010 yes. would be worth more than 500 crores. crores. I've read uh, this American Twitter handle. He had started investing his dad's money in crypto. He thought he will create a pension fund for his dad. I think in 2012, 2013, he took some of his dad's money and said, that, let's just put it in crypto and see what mm. happens. He's like, it blew up so much that it became his retirement fund and my retirement <laughs> fund. So that's what India needs to understand that these things are happening in the world. India needs that financial education when it comes to investing in mutual funds and the stock market. But this is modern day financial education. You need to see what the rest of the world is doing. Yeah. Uh, coming to history, you know how uh, they say that a lot of the countries in the medieval times, they thought about expansion. They thought about new technology. They thought about going and taking over other countries. Like that's why the British ruled us. Before mm -hmm. the British, the French and the Portuguese ruled us. Also keep in mind, in South America, the ancient civilizations were completely destroyed because of the Spanish and their technologies. Whichever countries adopt new technologies become the kings of the next 100, 200 years. That's right. what India needs to understand. That's what India needs to understand. If you look at the internet, right? Mm. In 1990s, there were companies. Right now, we are seeing Amazon. These are the companies that are built on top of internet. Internet was new 30 years mm. back, mm. right? People didn't know that we'll use apps like Uber, uh, you know, uh, eBay to do mm. the transactions. Mm. People, com countries who adopted internet. Now, internet also had a lot of things. People could buy, you know, do wrong things on the internet. Now, people, countries regulated it. Countries uh, uh, tried to promote the use of internet within uh, their people. And then now you could see billions of uh, dollars worth of companies or trillions of dollars worth of companies coming out of just internet alone. Mm. Uh, India was a lit, little bit behind in terms of adopting this technology. Mm. So what happened in India currently has 44 million um, IT developers, engineers. We are, we are not that advanced in terms of creating these companies. Right now we are seeing the shift happening, but India has amazing set of talented people, mm. right? Who can build these companies leveraging technology. Mm. Right now blockchain is one such technology. India should not leave behind in that. Mm. You will see all of these blockchain protocols, companies coming out of the other countries. Mm not as much happening in India because the understanding about this technology is fairly narrow in the mm, country. Mm. So what we have done to do uh, to solve that was we have launched a platform called DCX Learn, which allows any individual to learn crypto blockchain right from the basics. Mm. Yeah, talk a little bit about your startup. What do you do uh, specifically? What is Coin DCX? So Coin D6 is the India's simplest way to invest into crypto assets. Okay. If you want to buy Bitcoin, you can buy Bitcoin as low as one rupee. So if you have one wow. rupee, you want to invest one rupee into Bitcoin, you can do that via Coin D6 Go app. Wow. A lot of people have this confusion that, okay, if I, I want to invest in Bitcoin, but I don't have the money to buy one Bitcoin. Mm. That's actually not true. You can One, you, one Bitcoin is worth how much in rupees? Right now, it's roughly around 35, uh, 36 lakhs. 36 lakhs. Yeah. But you can also buy one rupee ka Bitcoin, which will be 0.0001 Bitcoin. Yeah. Mm. Called like 35... 30 Satoshis. Hmm. So one Bitcoin has like 100 million parts to it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Matlab, uh, Satoshis? Satoshi. Well, Satoshi is uh, their paisa. Like our rupee yes. versus paisa. Yes. Hmm. Wow. Okay. Uh, and you are actually through CoinDCX you're also educating people about the use of Bitcoin. Um, so, I mean, if you had to educate someone right now who's completely against Bitcoin, what would you say? Or completely against cryptocurrencies? Because uh, also Twitter India is running a campaign, hashtag India wants Bitcoin. Um, what are you guys fighting against? Is the government coming out with some kind of a policy to ban it? What's happening? Because even I have some of my money in Bitcoin. Hmm. 
so what has happened is uh, uh, in few years back when government was evaluating it uh, they were looking at bitcoin as a currency mm. right where people could use it uh, as part of the payment systems mm. whereas bitcoin is not exactly that of course it can help you transfer value but if you look technically it cost thousands of rupees to send bitcoin from one person to another mm. that's technically not feasible mm. not scalable so uh, government have like 3 years back 5 years back there were uh, 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 websites which used to accept payment in bitcoins and of course i mean there can be bad things that can happen but in the last few years the role of bitcoin as a currency has diminished now it is evolving more like an asset class now tesla investing into bitcoin right uh, they they don't want to send bitcoins from uh, to someone else they just want to hold yeah. it so they invested 1.5 billion dollars in bitcoin right yes okay wow but and that's with the intention of just let's hold on to this money that's let's hold on to that money and try to accumulate as much as possible right now if you go 20 years back in time where gold was let's say 1000 rupees and you know that gold is going to go this big you would want to hold it hmm. right gold is worth how much right now like right now i think it would be around 50 lakh rupees 1 kg 1 kg and maybe long long back it was worth 1000 rupees for 1 kg like 100 rupees also uh. right gold has a long history mm. gold was also 1 rupee at some point in time mm. right and it has evolved as more and more people start trusting in that mm. the value appreciates yeah. why because gold is a supply constraint thing right mm. you can't just make gold out of thin air yeah same as bitcoin bitcoin is coded in a way where you can't mint more bitcoins that's mm. how the system is designed mm. so you know i just want to highlight something the whole world is going digital in every possible way we are entering a world of virtual reality probably in 10 years time have you seen this movie ready player one uh, uh, no it's a movie about virtual reality and how social media will evolve into virtual reality at some point so when i was starting out my career everything was virtual everything was videos instagram mm. posts mm. and all my relatives were like why are you doing this virtual thing it's not mm. a real world thing mm. and i said no no hold on this will pay a lot of money at some point and today when they find out okay how much we charge for an instagram post or a youtube video then they're like oh oh we wish we did this back yeah. <laughs> this is that happening in the world of finance where everyone's like no no stick to the analog stuff stick to the old school things these are tried and tested and the whole world of crypto is saying wait you don't know the whole world is going digital hold on to this because this will be worth something in 10 20 years yes we are moving to a digital economy mm. uh, whatever we used to do in the offline world now most of the things have shifted online mm. right when you're shifting online you use lot of data mm. right and uh, you know data is the new oil mm. if you ha- are a country which has lots of oil reserves you will be super rich mm. right if you are a company which has lots of data companies like google amazon facebook they have tons of data they can use that data to create profits to mm. create use your data your own data what you are doing to show ads mm. right so your data in the internet world is not secured mm. right it needs to be your data should be with yourself right that's mm. where blockchain comes into picture mm. and as we are moving in the world of digital uh, you know some people say that a bitcoin is like the gold for the digital economy mm. in the offline world we have gold mm. where we use gold as a store of value in the internet world mm. we use bitcoin as the store of value mm. uh, whatever we see in the offline world is now currently shifting using this technology uh, in the internet world mm. right now we are using platforms like youtube now imagine a platform where you people are watching it and rather than youtube taking the commission all of that commission comes to you mm. so there's a, a good structure between the content consumers content publishers and the advertisers mm. and whole of the system can run without a company like youtube got it so bro tell me one thing um now let's talk about the individual consumer someone who wants to actually buy bitcoin there's two questions one is it safe for people to buy crypto right now because if the government bans it tomorrow what happens to all that bitcoin you own what happens to your startup i'd love to know that scenario also second i'd love to know actually what and why people should buy it right now with what intention it's definitely a part of the portfolio but i are you also preparing for a future so f- let's talk about that end consumer someone who's watching this and saying okay i have some extra money lying around even if it's 10000 rupees lying around but i want to put it in crypto what should they be thinking what should they be careful about 
Sure. So I think everyone should have Bitcoin as part of their portfolio simply because it's a very good uh, asset to have for port better portfolio diversification. Uh, right now we invest our money in a uh, lot of markets and we don't know what can happen. So you need to diversify it so that you net make good returns mm. of your money that you have invested mm. in. Now talking about India, yes, crypto is a new thing and that's something that I also felt uh, when I was when I heard about Bitcoin for the first time, it was difficult to mm. buy Bitcoin. Mm. Now things have changed. Mm. So the app that we were talking about uh, sometime back, Coin D6 Go, that allows it's just a matter of five minutes you can purchase your first Bitcoin as low as 10 rupees. What do you need? Like you need to give your Aadhaar card details. Yes, you need to do your okay. KYC just like you do in any other platform. So you do your... Uh, uh, KYC verification. Once you are done with that, you can deposit money from your bank account and purchase Bitcoin. Mm. Now that platform also allows you to store Bitcoin safely. Mm. So you don't need to uh, put it in a cold wallet or somewhere outside. You can just put it in the system and we as an exchange take care of those funds. Mm. Whenever you want to use it, you can sell it anytime you want mm. um, and, and then you want to withdraw it, you can also withdraw it to any other uh, uh, address that you want. Got it. Beautiful. But uh, again, about this whole thing about government saying, no, no, we are thinking of banning Bitcoin and all. What will happen to all the people who already put money in Bitcoin? Sure. So what is happening? There's a clear trend in shift. So I was on a, a panel with uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Subhash Garg, who was the former finance secretary. And uh, they have mentioned that the understanding that the government had in the past, was it like a legal tender? Now, uh, legal tender is something which is like Indian rupees, the note that we use. Bitcoin is not supposed to be a legal tender. Bitcoin is more like an asset class that you hold and invest in for a long term. Mm. Uh, so governments have also started realizing that it should be regulated. Mm. Right? Uh, and and uh, all the uh, RBI and all the government bodies outside, uh, they have also regulated and recognized this as an asset class. In mm. US, if companies can, like Tesla can invest in it, uh, why are we stopping Indian companies or corporations to invest in an asset class like Bitcoin, which is the future of money, mm. right? Mm. So that trend is shifting. I, I believe that our governments will also see and try to regulate it so that more companies can come out of blockchain technology. Mm. Uh, and, and India, right? Uh, for example, if India was given this opportunity to hold as much gold as possible, they would want to do it. Mm. Uh, right now, this is an opportunity in front of us where Indians can buy Bitcoin so that if it becomes a good store of value, India, uh, you know, our GDP will increase, mm -hmm. right? India should, uh, asset appreciation, because of the asset appreciation, our wealth within the country will increase. So, um, is it fair to say that Indians should take a little bit of a risk right now, forget about what's going to happen in the future, put some money in Bitcoin right now. Maybe the whole GDP increasing will give the government a reason to say, okay, Let's listen to this India wants Bitcoin hashtag and see what's happening. Yes, I think everyone should have Bitcoin as a part of their portfolio. It can be 0.1%, I, 1%. I, I agree with you. Like when you're saying that, even that's what I would say also. If a young person asked me for financial advice, I'd say that put something in Bitcoin. Yeah, something. and that's the trend that we are seeing. There are lots of people on our platform who have not invested in equity markets. Mm. They believe in Bitcoin. They believe that, okay, this is the future of money. I would want uh, to put my money uh, into Bitcoin. And, and uh, you know, that's the trend. Risk hai to ishk hai. Haan, risk hai to ishk hai. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I agree with you. And especially if you're young, you have 80 years of your life left minimum with biohacking coming into play. I keep yeah. talking about biohacking a lot, but you have a long time left. You don't know where the world is going. You don't know if the whole world is going to get decentralized. If America, Europe, China, Japan, Australia, everyone starts using Bitcoin, the Indian government will obviously say, okay, everyone's using it. If we are going to be that world's economic superpower, we'll have to. Yes. So while there is a possibility of governments banning Bitcoin, governments banning crypto, there is also a possibility of everyone going on that exactly. ship. And maybe at that point, Bitcoin value will go 100 times of what it is right now. Yeah. So while it's at this stage, you should buy it. Yes, um, you should buy it. And uh, every government is regulating it. Right. And governments will be uh, forced to, I mean, you can't technically stop uh, buying Bitcoin or you mm. can't technically stop because it's not controlled by any centralized party, mm -hmm. right? So there's no point banning it. I think uh, the right approach would be to understand the technology and regulating it. Mm. Just like what if India would have blocked internet mm. 30 years back, mm. right? Mm. We would be far, far behind in terms of technological like innovation. Like North Korea. Yeah. Like we would be North Korea. Yeah. So and the world should be more open, yeah. open to new technologies. Yeah. And I also feel that if we end up banning crypto, uh, we are on path to becoming a North Korea in some way. Like, so it needs to, it needs to be legal just to keep up with the rest of the world. Yes. Uh, when I look at the world map, I actually point out Scandinavian countries as probably the most advanced, both in terms of 
capitalism as well as just you know people who have a great work life balance people mm. who are very sorted in there mm. scandinavia is also backing crypto a lot norway sweden mm. all these places i think the, uh, i don't know the exact legality but all the countries are open to it mm. no india is going to be the first if india bans it, india is going to be the first country to ban crypto mm. yeah that's that's some dark times um okay i probably actually just want to end the basics episode right now there's a lot more to talk to you about to the end consumers that's you guys the listeners in the next episode we'll actually talk about how much money to put where which cryptocurrencies to select i'll also be revealing where i have put my own money uh, and how to think about that process what's the actual process so watch out for part 2 but before we go to part 2 sumit bhai any last uh, basic learning you want to add about cryptocurrencies because i feel like this episode explained what cryptocurrencies and blockchain is uh, any thing you want to add to this sure see this is a new asset class what is very very important is to understand uh, what this is all about mm. right i before i started investing i learned what bitcoin is what mm. blockchain is how it can how a decentralized future is good for the overall humanity mm. right i think if anyone is curious about learning more about it there's a platform d6 learn it's free of cost anyone can go and start reading about it from the yeah. basics yeah. Uh, that's the first thing once you do that uh, while uh, you know you can also start taking some expo- exposure into bitcoin uh, maybe you know starting with as low as 100 rupees see how change how things changes mm. and then gradually based on the risk appetite build it up from there so one thing that you should also ensure that you don't put money in all the cryptos mm. there are some good projects out there there are some bad projects so you should very carefully choose uh, which project you want to put money in and mm. then we'll cover more about it which tokens are good which crypto is good in the next episode yes. uh, so this is what it is man this is what the ranveer show is taking 10 years of this man's knowledge putting it into one episode of basics um uh, share this video show it to your friends show it to anyone who is against the idea of cryptocurrencies let's put education out there not debating not anger not biases lots of older people actually older indians are very against it matlab the moment you'll say bit 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 they go like no 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 bitcoin bitcoin nahi chahiye so uh i hope that this podcast changes it and i hope that the next one gives you actual feasible actionable steps thank you sumit we will see you in part 2 thank you ranveer <laughs>